Good morning. I am Mrs. P. Giri, PGT Physics from Kendri Vidyalaya BEG, Pune. So today we will be studying the unit 7 of class 12 physics syllabus that is dual nature of radiation and matter. First of all, I will explain you about the term dual. So dual actually means double or two. So regarding radiation, you must have studied earlier in earlier chapters. So radiation involves light, X-ray radiation, gamma ray radiation, UV radiation, IR radiation, etc. So matter So radiation involves these radiations like these examples. Matter includes all material particles. Or in fact any matter. So we have to study about dual nature of radiation and matter in this chapter. Dual nature of radiation we will see first. So light, now, now it is accepted that light has dual nature that is particle as well as wave. So it has got two aspects that is particle aspect and wave aspect. Light exhibits its particle nature when it is emitted from some source, then it exhibits its wave characters when it is propagating through some medium. We can see particle nature not only during emission, but also during interaction with material surface. So now we understood that light radiation has got particle nature as well as wave nature. So we say that radiation has dual nature that is two aspects particle and wave. Now universe if you consider anything in the universe is ex existing as radiation or matter and we also know that nature loves symmetry. So De Broglie argued that when radiation has got dual nature, similarly matter also should have dual nature. So he proposed dualistic characteristic of matter and we will see that in the later course. First we will study in detail about the dual nature of radiation. As I told earlier that particle nature is exhibited when the light radiations are emitted from some source or it is interacting with some matter. So based on this particle nature, we can explain the phenomena like reflection, refraction, etc. We can be, we can be explained based on the particle nature. And when interference and diffraction, the phenomena like interference, diffraction and polarization, these three phenomena can be explained only based on the wave theory. Wave theory even explained reflection and refraction also, but interference, diffraction and polarization could be explained only based on the wave theory. So actually the particle nature, particle nature of light radiation was proposed first by Newton. Then hygiene found out the wave theory and using wave theory he could explain even reflection and refraction also. But when photoelectric effect was invented, when photoelectric effect was invented,
this wave theory failed in explaining photoelectric effect. Then Planck's gave quantum theory. According to the quantum theory, radiation was emitted in the form of packets of energy called photon. So this photon was considered to be like particle in the sense packet of energy. So each packet of energy is given the name photon and it can be visualized as particle. So photoelectric effect could be explained successfully only by quantum theory that is emission of radiation in the form of packet of energy which is given the name photon. So now we will see some characteristic features of photon. So if you consider any source of radiation, it emits energy in all directions. So the every source of radiation emits energy in the form of packets so which is given the name which are called as photons. So each photon is associated with some energy which is given by E equal to H nu where H is the Planck's constant. and nu is frequency of radiation. Which can be written as in terms of wavelength. Le wavelength lam lambda is called wavelength of light radiation and C is the velocity of light radiation. So this E equal to H nu or Hc by lambda is very important formula because it gives you the value of energy possessed by each photon. And these photons emitted by the source of radiation travel in straight line with the same velocity c. The value is given by 3 into 10 power 8 meter by second in particular medium or in vacuum we say vacuum or air. So these photons, all photons travel in straight line with constant velocity in particular medium. So when they travel from one medium to another, there will not be any change in the frequency or color. Frequency or color will not be changing when the photon is going from one medium to another because this frequency actually fix the energy of the photon. So there will not be any change at all in color or frequency when the medium is changing. But there will be change in the velocity. Velocity will change due to change in the wavelength. Change in wavelength. So this point we have to keep in mind that there is only change in the velocity but not in the frequency when photons are traveling from one medium to another medium. Then suppose uh, we have seen that that uh, photon, every photon is traveling with the velocity of light. Suppose the velocity is very high, then the mass of the particle is given by Einstein's relati relativistic equation that is m equal to m naught upon under root 1 minus v square by c square. So in this m is the velocity of the particle when it is traveling with, sorry, m is the mass of the particle. m is the mass of the particle when it is traveling with velocity v. Since photons are traveling with velocity c, so when v becomes c, when v becomes c, this equation, from this equation we will understand that m naught equal to m into under root 1 minus v square by c square. So if you substitute v equal to c in this equation, what we observe is, m naught will be 0. But what is m naught here? m naught is the rest mass. m naught is rest mass. That means 
mass of the particle when it is at rest, when it is not at all moving. So, that rest mass we are getting from this equation equal to 0, but we know that mass cannot be 0. That means, what is the meaning of this one? That photons can never be at rest, photons cannot be at rest, photons cannot be at rest. That means, the photons are always moving. And one more main feature of the photons are that the photons are uncharged, they are not at all charged. So, what is the proof of this? If the photons are subjected to electric and magnetic fields, they will not be getting deflected at all. So, from this we understand that photons are uncharged they are simply packets of energy. So, next we will study about photoelectric effect. So, from the name itself we can understand the electric effect of light, photo means light. So, it deals with production of light energy, sorry production of electrical energy from light energy. So, the electricity produced due to the interaction of light energy is called photoelectric effect. So, the phenomenon is called photoelectric effect. Phenomenon of emission of electrons from metal surface when radiations of suitable frequency fall on the metal surface. So, when electrons are coming out of the metal surface, they constitute the current. So, the current so produced is called photoelectric current. And the electrons emitted are called photoelectrons. Electrons are named as photoelectrons and the current so, emitted is called photoelectric current. So, the photoelectric effect is defined as phenomenon of emission of electrons from metal surfaces when radiations of suitable frequency. So, this term is very important suitable frequency fall on the metal surfaces. So, why we have to see the suitable frequency? I already mentioned that each photon is having energy E equal to h nu. So, the energy depends upon the frequency. So, the energy of each photon falling on the metal surface depends upon the frequency. Suppose, you have metal surface and you know that all matter is made up of atoms and every atom Suppose, we consider some free electrons, free electrons in the sense the valence electrons which are not tightly bound to the nucleus. So, these free electrons are moving randomly inside the metal, they cannot come out of the metal surface on their own. Why they cannot come out of the metal surface? Suppose, this electron, the valence electron belonging to this particular atom is coming out from the from this atom. So, what it will do? It will leave behind a positive ion. The electron if it is leaving the orbits of a particular atom, orbit of the particular atom, it will leave behind a positive ion. So, there will be a force of attraction developed between this electron and the left behind positive ion. So, if the electron has to come out of the metal surface, then it has to overcome this attractive force which is called restraining force. 
So attractive force has to be overcome, which is developed because of the removal of the electron. So for the electron to come out of the metal surface, this attractive force has to be overcome. That means if radiation of some energy is falling on the metal surface, the electrons which are trying to come out of this atom will absorb this energy, incident energy. Suppose an incident photon is falling, say photon of frequency nu is falling on the metal surface, the energy possessed by the photon will be absorbed by the electron. So because of that, it will gain some energy and overcome this at attractive force and the electrons can, electron can come out of the metal surface. So that means this photon should possess some minimum energy so that it can be utilized in two ways. That is to in overcoming the attractive force plus imparting some energy, that kinetic energy for the electron to come out of the metal surface. So every metal surface possesses or it has some minimum energy, it requires some minimum energy for the emission of electrons from the metal surface. So this minimum energy required by the electrons to come out of the metal surface is called work function represented by phi naught. Phi naught is written as h into nu naught. So work function is what? Minimum energy. required by the electrons to come out of the metal surface. Come out of the metal surface. So this is written as H into nu naught, where nu naught is called threshold frequency. It's called threshold frequency. So threshold frequency is the minimum frequency which should be possessed by the photons, incident photons, so that it can result in the emission of photoelectrons. So that threshold frequency should be possessed by the incident photon. Suppose the uh, frequency of incident photon, if that is nu, is less than nu naught, then the energy possessed by these incident photons will not be sufficient for the electron.